What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop. So we all know our boy Ash Ketchum, and if there's one thing we know about Ash Ketchum, it's that he tends to disappoint us all the freaking time. Despite being the protagonist of a show that's been on the air for over 20 years, he's only ever won one Pokemon League, and that was the Orange League, which was essentially a filler season, so it hardly even counts. However, that's not to say that all hope is lost with Ash, because he actually could win these Pokemon Leagues with a few tweaks here and there, and showing you just how he could actually pull that off is exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. However, this is kind of a big task to take on all by myself, so I've brought in my very very good friend Kay Cray to help me out. Hey guys, my name is Kaylin. I also go by Kay Cray here on YouTube. And yes, I am here to help Hoops show you guys just how Ash Ketchum could have won the Pokemon League. And in this particular video, we are going to be taking a look at the OG Indigo League. Now the criteria here is pretty simple. We are going to be looking at the Pokemon that Ash had available to him during the Indigo League, look at the opponents that he faced, and then we're going to construct a team that would have given Ash the best chance to succeed. And the results here are honestly pretty interesting. So let's just get into the video. Okay, so like Kaylin said, the first step is going to be to identify all the Pokemon Ash had available to him during the Indigo League. At the time of his entry, both in his party and at Professor Oak's lab, Ash had Pikachu, Pidgeotto, Bulbasaur, Charizard, Squirtle, Krabby, who would eventually become Kingler, Muck, and Tauros. Now, while we probably could offer some improvements to Ash in terms of how to more easily get through his first few rounds, we gotta admit that he was able to get decently far on his own, so we're gonna give him a pass and just quickly recap the rounds that he actually won. Starting off, Ash wins his first round battle with Krabby, who he had never even used before, but ends up evolving into Kingler and learning Hyper Beam in the same battle because anime logic. Following that up, Ash quickly wins his second round match with Squirtle, and then proceeds to win a very exciting third round match against the notorious Pete Pebbleman. Curse you, Pete! Kingler once again steps up and gives Ash a victory in the match, along with the ever-trusty Pikachu, advancing Ash into the fourth round. In the fourth and final preliminary round, Ash goes up against Jeanette and her weirdly good Bellsprout. It goes down to the wire, but Ash manages to secure a victory thanks to some great performances from Bulbasaur and Muck. Now we get to the part where Ash starts screwing up. In the fifth round, Ash ends up battling Richie and loses due to a number of mistakes, so this is where we'll start making some changes. First, a big thing to note here is that Ash arrived to the battle after having to deal with Team Rocket, and that was a big factor in terms of how the battle played out. In the battle, Richie's team consisted of Butterfree, Charmander, and Pikachu, and even though the anime has a habit of featuring really strong, unevolved Pokemon, this is definitely a team that Ash can beat. However, Ash's first mistake was using Squirtle as one of his three Pokemon. Squirtle was easily defeated right off the bat by Richie's Butterfree when it used Sleep Powder, which was a smart move considering Squirtle was already tired after having to deal with Team Rocket. A much better choice here would have been Kingler, because not only is Kingler a water type just like Squirtle, and therefore still gives you the type advantage against Charmander, but it's also a fully evolved Pokemon that's at full health during this battle, and has already done really well in the league up to this point. The next matchup that takes place is Ash's Pikachu versus Richie's Charmander. Now Pikachu does make the lineup for this because not only is he arguably Ash's best battler, but he also has a type advantage against Butterfree, both of which are evident in this one as Pikachu is able to defeat Butterfree in spite of already being exhausted by Team Rocket. However, Charmander is able to defeat Pikachu because of this, which is why using a healthy Kingler would have been so important in this one because Kingler could have helped pick up the slack left by Pikachu. The next move, though, is what really kills it for Ash. Being a bit flustered, he makes the rash decision to send out Charizard, who at this point is not even obedient. It's not difficult to see why this is a bad choice. Instead, Ash could have used a Pokemon that he caught in Kanto, but did not even use until the Orange Islands, and that is Tauros. Now, Tauros is a solid Pokemon, but it may seem like an odd choice against a Pikachu. However, the reason that we settled on Tauros is because it has access 
to Earthquake, a powerful ground-type move that would indubitably wreck Pikachu. Now that we've given Ash a bit of competence and got him out of the top 16, we now enter into the hypothetical category. Since Ash would have beat Richie in this situation, it's likely that he would have faced Richie's next opponent in the next round, so that's who we'll place him against, and wouldn't you know it, the success translates pretty smoothly. Richie's opponent, aka Ash's opponent in this scenario, was shown to have owned a Rhydon, a Venomoth, a Spearow or Tentacool, and an Ivysaur. Now, against the first three, the type advantages translate perfectly. Kingler would be there to take on Rhydon, Pikachu would be there to take on Venomoth, and both Spearow and Tentacool would be taken care of by Pikachu. When it comes to the added fourth Pokemon, Ivysaur, there really isn't a problem there either because Ash has Pidgeotto, one of his most reliable Pokemon, to provide yet another type advantage. Granted, I know that anime battles don't always go the same as battles in the game because the anime likes to add and break all sorts of rules, but it's pretty safe to say that Ash would have had the advantage in this situation regardless, and I can see this team propelling him all the way to the top of the Indigo Plateau. As much as we'd like to keep speculating and show you guys exactly how Ash could have won the championship match, this is about as far as the anime lets us see. After Richie's battle in the top eight, we no longer see any other matches in the Indigo League conference, and the winners are decided before we even see what Pokemon they used. So while we can't actually match Ash up with the real Indigo League champion, we can confidently place him in the top four. And with the types of teams we've shown he can put together with the Pokemon that he has available to him, we feel pretty good that he'd take home the crown. Or he'd pull a classic Ash move and totally blow it. But hey, at least it's better than what he was doing on his own. And there we go, guys. That is how we believe Ash Ketchum could have won the Indigo League. I gotta admit, this video was a blast to put together, so if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe while you're here for more Pokemon content each week. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this for the other leagues that Ash has lost, because it would be really fun to turn this into a full-fledged series. The other thing you guys should really go do is check out Kcray's channel. She does a variety of Pokemon content, including occasional top 5 videos and Let's Plays and stuff like that, and her videos are all so well done and they're so much fun to watch. So be sure to follow the iCard at the top of the screen or go to the link in the description to check out her channel and drop her a sub while you're there. You will not regret it. Finally, as a follow-up to that, K Cray and I will also be at PAX East next week in Boston, so if you're going to go to the convention and you happen to see one of us, don't be afraid to come say hi because it would really be awesome to meet some of you guys if you happen to be at the convention. Anyways, though, with all of that being said, thank you again so much for watching. I will be back with another video very soon, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.